Well, hi and welcome to my beautiful office. We are certainly into breeding season. Have a few birds nesting at the minute that I'd like to show you. Just this morning I was watching the white-eared honey eater build a nest which is just in front of me. So I'm back in the afternoon to see whether I could get it on film. And it's in a beautiful position. Absolutely fantastic to actually film, but it's just a direct line in. It's just awesome. It's got the camera up a bit and see down in. Oh, so it'll be great to be able to get some really high quality footage using a low light beast, the R6. It's my go to camera when you get these horrible overcast conditions that are so dark. Okay, so we've got mum's come back. She spotted me and she's not happy about it. <laughs> that was awesome. I haven't been here all that long. We've got some stuff. The camera was struggling to focus then because I had to turn it back on. The R6 will not keep its focus even if you set it manually. When you turn the camera off, the lens automatically switches it back over to infinity. It's one of the things that pisses me off about the R6. Anyway, that was awesome. We got it on film. Uh, I'll just see if I can get a little bit more of it uh, building the nest. And then we'll move on to some others. This is a ground thrush nest. It's about six meters off the ground. Mum's off looking for worms and stuff at the minute. Can't see her. Although she could be standing right next to me and I wouldn't even know that she's there unless she moves. The master of disguise. The ground thrush. So it's in a beautiful position for me to you know, get a little bit of footage of coming in and feeding the chicks which I think might be in a week and a half's time. In front of the camera is a grey strike thrush's nest. I have to be very quiet and try not to make too much movement. I, hopefully I can stay hidden but they have very keen eyes. <laughs> uh, what happens is if you're within a certain distance of the nest and they're not happy about it they will not come in. Anyway, what alerted me to the fact that they had a nest here was uh, the male was sitting up high in the trees above it. He was making a call like he, like he would normally do, you know, even during the winter months and all that, out of season of breeding. But it it's, just has a subtle change. Then I heard the female. Now she was telling me that they have chicks in the nest and that she wasn't very far away from it. What she will do is make this one note sound. Very quiet. The closer she gets to the nest, that becomes quieter and softer. So I just watch for a little while, and once they both left, I've got into position. So I'm beside this tree, hopefully nicely hidden, but if they fly behind me, coming back into the nest, well, they're gonna see me pretty easy. But anyway, um, I just had a, a yellow robin land beside me, a few metres away, uh, with its wings out, and it was doing that hoppy movement. So I knew straight away that they had a nest either nearby or, you know, or whether it, I might be right on top of it, I must be close to it. And I had a, look, a little look around, and there's a chick 
right behind me here, sitting on a branch out in the open. So once I've got a, a, a bit of uh, footage and stuff here of mum coming in feeding the chicks, then I'll head over and start taking some photographs and film uh, mum coming in feeding this yellow robin chick. Well, good morning, just setting the camera up, getting it ready for action. I think I'm a little late, so it's 7.30, from what I'm hearing from mum and dad, I'm thinking the chicks have left the nest. Yeah, yesterday I noticed that they're fully feathered, because we're five days on from when I first found them, and they look like they were ready to fly at any time, even last night, I thought, you know, Right, let's get out of bed really early, get out here, beat them before they get out because it's either in the morning or late afternoons when they jump the nest. But yeah, from what I'm just hearing now, I think I've slept in too long. But anyway, camera's ready. You need to have everything prepared before you go in there. So the camera is all set up. All I've got to do is plunk that tripod down start filming because if you make any disturbance mum and dad are going to see me and uh, not come down so right, let's uh, stop waffling let's uh, get into it well it's just like I thought the chicks have left the nest this morning you can hear them just in front of me I can't see them I'm just trying to get into a position where I can see them Well that was an unbelievable session, we got a few shots, wasn't in the perfect spot but uh, yeah we got some nice photographs of the chick, awesome. We followed the chicks from a very young age and then them leaving the nest, unfortunately I didn't get that perfect moment of them coming out of the nest. I've come across something very exciting for me anyway, <laughs> it is the white browed scrub wren building a nest. Now, I've filmed these tons of times before but this one is really good we get a beautiful line of sight 
unobscured straight into the entrance of the nest. Uh, the most exciting part is that there's a big chance that the fantail cuckoo will lay an egg in this nest. Uh, I've studied them a little bit. It was a couple of years ago I had come across one that was a bit late. The chick uh, was only in the nest for a week, so I got to see what was happening, being fed and getting those beautiful sounds that they sound like that. Uh, but I didn't get the whole story of it from the start to the finish. So I only saw it for that week and then it left the nest and I tried to film it as it went around the place. But I'd like to understand a bit more and get a lot more footage and stuff. So anyway, yeah, got a nest in a beautiful position. I've already got some footage and some good photographs, but I'd like to increase those photographs of mum bringing leaves in to the nest. Have this nice little branch here that, that I've been landing on because I look for those patterns. What she does, is she comes back, she jumps up on to this uh, little bush here, then she goes to that branch and then she goes into the nest. So I have a nice clean sight onto that branch to get some really good shots. You've got to be quick though, it's amazing how fast they are, they land and then they fly. This is one of my favourite little birds, a spotted pardalote. And it's built its nest in the top of a wombat burrow. This is something I see a lot of in the reserve. Uh, there are quite a few that like to nest in the bank of the, the creek. So a lot of them do like to get in the wombat burrows, which do make them very vulnerable to being attacked. So, yeah, it's another great find. Not far away, the white-browed scrub wren's nest. This is a golden whistler nest. I saw mum bringing nesting material up to this spot a couple of weeks ago. And now they're sitting on the eggs, so you can just pick out mum. She's really low in the nest, trying to hide. And you can hear just in the background there, the male doing his uh, bit of a call to the other Golden Whistlers to uh, stay away. This is my territory. Sounds like that's what he's doing. So this will be really interesting to follow right through. Have a new, have a new development at that grey thrush's nesting site in the fern tree. The ones that I filmed bringing up the chicks. But I've just been walking past, and I saw them taking nesting material into that same fern tree. So they're rebuilding another nest. Looks like a little bit away from the other one. That's, is it the same pair? That's what I'm trying to work out. Um, yeah, it's something I've never observed before. The same pair coming back three weeks later and nesting again in the same spot. It, yeah, it just makes me a little sus that uh, the same pair because they're creatures of habit. I've noticed this over the years. Grey thrushes like to nest in the same sort of environment every year after year. So I'm just wondering maybe because it's such a good season with uh, insects and stuff, they're going again. But what are they doing with their chicks? It's only three weeks ago the chicks flew the nest. So are they still looking after them somewhere in the reserve and building another nest at the same time? Or is it a different pair? It's just a coincidence that they've chosen the same place.
I don't know. It's interesting. All right. All right, I've got the camera set up. I've just flown off. So I'm going to shoot in there now. Get them all sorted out and uh, see what I can get. Well, just as I turn the camera on, it starts to drizzle. But anyway, I made a very exciting discovery yesterday. Uh, there's a bit of formwork that I have just down here. There. <laughs> At nesting box number two. So that's nesting box number two. Can't lift the camera up too much because of the drizzle. But um, it was part that bit of formwork was part of a uh, platform. Yeah, I've got to put this camera down. I'm going to stop now because it's uh, it's too heavy. But yeah, I had that laying there, bit of rubbish, and I thought, yeah, take let's take all this rubbish home. So I, as I went lifted it up, I could see that something had made runs in the ground, like a mice would do, you know, in a shed. You pick up a bit of rubbish, <laughs> and there'd be runs through. So thought oh that's interesting because there's also a little bit of um, some leaves in one spot that would look like something was constructing a nest. The Agile Antichinus and Dusk Antichinus use 100% gum leaves, that's all they use. So it made me a little suspicious that it might be a Dusky Antichinus. I thought okay let's put it down and see what happens over the next few weeks. And I just kept checking it once every week and uh, yeah, uh, a month later, all of a sudden, uh, there's more construction going on there. So a very basic nest, but it's slowly being constructed in a dome shape. Uh, so fast forward into October now, and we're almost at the end. Three days ago, I had a look, and sure enough, a complete nest has been built. It's still very basic, it's very thin, only a couple of layers. I thought, well, I'll come back tomorrow. So I did, I came back, which is yesterday, and had another look out of curiosity. And sure enough, then a little nose poked out, and I could see the leaves moving like something was in there breathing. <laughs> and it looked like the nose of a dusky antichinus. So I put the bit of uh, formwork back down and walked away and watch what was going to happen. I also watching here because I've got in nesting box number two an agile antichinus female has shifted her young into here as well. So very late, that's only last week she's done that. But yeah, I waited for her to go. She eventually did after an hour. And I thought, let's see whether there's any young in there. And sure enough, there was. <laughs> Six joeys in there. I thought, make the most of it. Be very quick though. Do a little bit of filming of them and I uh, put it back down. Hopefully she stays here and she doesn't shift them again because obviously she has been building up to shifting them where her uh, original nest is, wherever that is. Uh, she mustn't have been quite happy about it and she thought that this would be a better environment for them to grow up in. So she shifted them here. So uh, yeah, did a little bit of filming counted how many there were, uh, quickly put it all back down and I'm leaving it for a couple of days. So yesterday I went nuts at home constructing a, a box that I could put my trail camera in with a lid. So it's all waterproof but just basic, very quick, out of timber. Doesn't have to last all that long, just this, this summer. So that is all ready. What I need to do tomorrow is replace that bit of wood with another one Qu quickly run home cut a square out put my box on top fit it all in nicely shoot back here as quickly as possible and put it back on top leave it for another couple of days so she gets used to it being there without any disturbance then start filming fingers crossed that i haven't scared her off Big change of plans. I am not going to put a construction for my cameras on top of that bit of formwork where the Ascanti Kinus females bringing up her young. 
I'm going to do the smart thing and leave them alone. All I'll do is set up a couple of stages around, so some branches for the young to run up on when they uh, get a little older and start venturing out. I think that's more what I'm looking for anyway. Uh, that part of their life that I didn't get to see with the last lot. So I think this is a bit smarter. Uh, there's a big chance that I could frighten mum off here if I uh, did the other thing. So fingers crossed everything goes well. Morning filming and photographing for these guys because the sun comes directly through there up until about 10 o'clock. Then from uh, two o'clock onwards I get beautiful light coming on to nesting box number two so I can photograph the young coming out from uh, the agile antichinus and running on to this bit of wood I've got here as a stage as well so yeah that's a smart thing for me to do it's also smart for me to finish up this video it's been going for a long time so I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, got something out of it and if you'd like to subscribe to my channel and get more of this amazing stuff, click on my pretty little face just down the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Hit the little bell, you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. If you want to go and have a look at all the other mad and crazy things I've been doing in the past, click on my icon right here at the end of this video. Take it to my channel. I talk about photographing and filming in a forest environment, out in the open, birds in flight, all sorts of things. Uh, when I go on adventures, I always take you with me. When I buy new camera gear and camera accessories, I always give you my honest opinion on it. Just go and have a browse, there'll be something there of interest to you, I am sure. And just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing, filming wildlife, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.